All right, and we are live. So, greetings, agitators, people of the internet. Welcome to the bar. I am Sippy Cup, your humble bartender and entertainer for whatever time of day it happens to be for you. And welcome to Sippy's First Drink. If you're unfamiliar with Sippy's First Drink, what we do here is I've I have a variety of games that I try out for 10 to 60 minutes apiece, and then give you my unfiltered first impressions review. The game that we're going to be trying out next is called The Innsmouth Case. This is a point-and-click Cthulhu-esque Lovecraftian horror game with a sprinkle of comedy in it. Um, as any good PNC mystery will do. Um... So, it's always good when I click on the thing and it gives me the, the unity thing. Uh, let's, let's start with settings. Obviously English. Oh, I could put this in German. I'm actually learning German right now. Uh, I'm going to lower my volume a little bit. Back. Well, it's a PNC, so obviously, point and click. New game. We are fans of the strange world of Vinsmith, but we recognize the problematic beliefs of HP Lovecraft. Ah, nice. This game has been produced by a group of people who believe in inclusion and equality. So, they are right from the right from the jump addressing the fact that uh, HP Lovecraft is a bit of a fucking racist. And they like the worlds that he created, but not him as a human being. Love it. Progress of the story will be saved. At the end of each chapter, there are 35 chapters in total. At the end of a chapter, the screen fades to black, and a green save icon screen appears, which you can't see under my big fat face. I recommend you always end the game after such a save point to make sure none of your progress is lost. Okay. Boston, 21st September. The last rays of sunshine filter through the blinds of your empty office. The pathetic stench of whiskey, cold cigarette smoke, and canned ravioli fills the air. The screeching tires and constant beeping of car horns out there on the street tell you that it's gone 8 p.m. People are on their way home finishing their day. You should join them. You decide to stay at your desk. Your day was long and frustrating. You are running out of ideas on how to handle the calls of people who want money from you. Cold shiver run down your spine as you flick through a pile of unpaid bills. We're going to call that started. Uh, oh, shit. The next one is a three-figure figure invoice from a games company for in-app purchases. You tried to claim them as business expenses in your last investigation, but somehow your client refused to pay. Then there's a second reminder from your internet provider threatening to cut off your connection. You might take legal action because without the internet, you can't work or live. You really need... A little fresh air. Jerk up the blinds. Amongst the dust, the layers of light shine into your eyes like a laser sight on in a spy flick. It takes a few seconds for your eyes to adjust. Your gaze settles on the Horns and Hooves pub across the street. How many simple jobs this dive has given you? Jealous wives, new husbands you had to spy on. All you had to do was lie and wait in, at the window and take pictures of them coming out of the dirtiest hole in town. Close the window before you see anyone you know. You breathe the sigh of you breathe a deep sigh. It may not have been a successful day, but at least it's over. You are looking forward to classic Friday night, watching old mystery series at home in sweatpants and getting drunk on cheap booze. Since the early afternoon, you have been staring at the foreboding bottle of liquor at the other end of the room. Up until now, a vague sense of professionalism has kept you from drinking yourself into oblivion. Now nothing stands in the way. Suddenly, you he hear someone at the door. Who is it? The door slowly cracks open with a timid creak. The unknown guest pauses, then in a breath breathy, breathy, a melodic tone, you hear a woman utter, Hello? Your insides cramp. You suddenly realize that you haven't cleaned your office at all this year. You... Invite her in. By the light of the desk lamp, you now see more than a silhouette. A breathtaking woman lights up your office. And no doubt older than 40, maybe even 50, hard to say. Clad in black, skin-tight dress, culminating in a décolle that seems to defy the laws of gravity. Smoky eyeshadow as dark as algae washed ashore, blonde, coiffed, wavy hair under a dark beret. The faint light of the setting sun catches in the strands of her hair, and you wonder how many heads this woman must have turned during her prime. She's completely different from your usual customers, nervous bankers with sweat stains under their armpits, convinced their wives have something going with a mailman. Every move she makes is calculated, great, smooth as a needle, she walks towards you and sits down at the corner of your desk. Determined, she walks towards your desk and sits down at the corner which is a little bold, which makes you blush, which is a little bold. 
Without asking you first, but as professional, you're not giving away anything. She seems to want to play the seductive damsel in distress. The quiet, amused voice of your subconscious is pleased that this stranger may be sharing your enthusiasm for film noir cliches. A far louder voice is surprised that this woman seems to think that a sexy pose in revealing clothes would win you over. And both voices agree that they don't like being manipulated. You don't think that the stranger perched on your table is trying to recover from a hard-working day as a lingerie model, and therefore you see no logical reason for her behavior. When she begins to speak, her voice is smoky and full of promise. My name's Dahlia Marsh. I'm looking for a private investigator. I was told you are one of the best. She extends her hand. You've come to the right... Kiss her hand. You've come to the right place to climb. You've come to the right place. What can I do for you? You sit back in your chair and fold your hands over your stomach. The woman seems a little irritated that her provocative behavior seems to have had no effect on you. She moves from the edge of the desk and sits down in the chair opposite. Uh, yes, I... She continues to speak. The smoke is inducted and creeps back into her voice. My name is Dahlia. I need help. Ask for more details. It's about my daughter, Tabitha. She has disappeared. You're pulling out a paper and pencil. This is going to be a walk in the park. A walk in the kidnapped kids park. Well, when did you last see her and where? The woman puts on a fake smile. We live in Innsmouth. It's a small port town north of Arkham. You frown. This is a bit vague. What was your child doing when you last saw her? What hobbies does she have? Oh, you know, kid stuff. You know, they just run around and uh, play with their yo-yos, that sort of thing. Dahlia nervously combs her hands through her hair. Does your daughter have any friends? Yo-yos, what about her father? What does your daughter look like? What does your daughter look like? Only eight and the sweetest girl you can imagine. She's been missing without a trace since last week. None of her schoolmates have seen her and no one knows where she might have gone. Hands you a photo. Look, this is my little munchkin. Okay. Is this supposed to be a joke? Is that really the face of a child or a shoddy photo edit? Are you being filmed as part of a reality TV show? A bit of stomach acid in the last bite of lunch slowly but surely makes her way up into the pack of your mouth. You swallow it! With the narrow eyes, you swallow the bile and involuntary pull of face. Dahlia continues to look at you, hopefully. She obviously didn't notice your little mess hat. That was close. You could have been on that end could have been unpleasant. So desperate, her eyes lock with yours. Don't you think there's something strange about your child? Ask more questions about the case. Uh, friends. Uh, she might be staying with classmates, sports club members, anything like that. Dahlia silently shakes her head. Very strange. You're about to ask if the girl at least had imaginary friends, but you hold back. Yo-yos. Ring, ring, can you hear that? It's the 90s calling, and they want their outdated toys back. Dahlia blushes. Normally, you would find this quite attractive, but the case of a missing girl beckons you. You're utterly unconvinced by the way this woman pretends to be a mother. Uh, confront her. Something's fishy here. You have a nose for this sort of thing. That's why you became a PI, or to be more precise, that's why you took on online detective course that for a one-off fee provided the necessary qualification. It's time to take your visitor to task. You let her her closely why did you come to me it's is several miles away from here why do you want to hire me i wouldn't even hire myself dolly crosses her arms uh what do you care do you not want to be paid charge extra expenses your moment has come if i'm going to on a journey into the unknown it won't be cheap you lean in but i'm sure your daughter is worth a lot to you with what you hope is a poker face, you peer hard into Dahlia's cold eyes. After what feels like an eternity, she nods, pulls out a second envelope out of her wallet. You wonder what it was meant for originally. Consider this advance a sign of my confidence. You nod. A missing person's case is nothing unusual. The conventional little girl runs away from home after reading her first romance novel. Usually they hide at the edge of the forest or in a library. Should be pretty straightforward. Before you can say anything, she drops a photo of the child and a roll of bills on your desk for your expensive. You nod slowly, trying not to drool down the front of your shirt. You haven't seen this much money in ages. Haven't had much time to prepare. Quick search reveals that only one bus goes to Innsmouth and only once a day. A pattern emerges in your research. The few news items related to this little coastal town are all about missing persons. In addition, you find some rather old-fashioned articles that praise the coastal town as a secret holiday destination, best fish, untouched beach promenade. Authentic fishing people are the recurring buzzwords. Dahlia has given you the address at which you're supposed to drop off her daughter as soon as you find her. She also wrote down her phone number on the child's photo. You take another look at the picture before you pack your things. By the bus. Take the bus.
Your journey begins at a busy bus station. There is supposed to be a bus line that departs here to Innsmouth. Buses, you think to yourself, are not only an environmentally friendly means of transportation, they're also easy on your wallet. Sadly, the departure boards aren't much of a help. New York, Maine, Rhode Island, no trace of Innsmouth as a destination. You wander around for a while until you notice a uh, cleaner eating a sandwich on the side of one of the vending machines. Talk to the cleaner. Where can I find the bus to Inns without letting go of a sandwich? The cleaner points to an abandoned counter at the dingiest corner that a public bus station could be capable of. And I've been to public bus stations. They can be pretty fucking dingy. The man gives you a nod, indicating that anything that can be said has indeed been said. You find that the counter is elaborately decorated with cobwebs. It's a bit early for Halloween preparations, but at least someone's made an effort. At the moment, nobody seems to be there. You press your face against the plastic window to peer into the room behind. Hello, anyone there? Gotta go to Innsmouth. No one is there. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a bus ticket appears on the counter. Might the trip be free? Leave a donation. You're... A staunch defender of the law, it goes without saying that you pay. You put a few coins in the bowl underneath a foggy glass window. Hopefully, they won't be stolen by the next passenger. Even if someone were sitting behind the counter, you wouldn't be able to see him. It's just too dark. You are distracted for a few seconds, and suddenly there's some change on the counter. What's this in amongst the coins? A small golden fishing hook? How strange. Where's the bus hiding? In between the polished greyhounds and travelers stowing their luggage, saying goodbye and dropping tirely into their seats, there's a kind of dumpster with windows and wheels? No, it's actually a bus. But on the rusty side, and even from a distance, you sense the strange smell it emits. Is that sulfur? You're not convinced how this thing is supposed to drive. In its vicinity, everything is noticeably quieter than at the other bus stops. The people getting on show no signs of emotion. Somebody is trying to jump the queue here. Instead, the passengers move past the bus driver at a uniform speed. Oh, nobody's trying to jump the queue here. Instead, passengers move past the bus driver at uniform speed, one after the other, shuffling up the creaking steps. Each two-seater bench is occupied by individuals, as if they want to make sure not to come into contact with their fellow passengers. Sign clearly says Innsmouth. No departure times, no stop off stopovers, just Innsmouth. Uh, undecided, you're standing on the stairs of the bus. Show your ticket. Hand the bus driver the ticket. No reaction. At least you can't make out a reaction. The lighting is uh, poor, and the shadow of this dusty driver's cap covers almost his entire face. Something strange on his neck, but you can't quite make out what it might be. You're standing at the door, waiting for an okay, an odd anything. The sulfur odor has increased. The queue has formed behind you. No one's pushing nor complaining. People wait quietly and patiently. Uh, just keep walking. You shuffle sideways through the center aisle. You don't remember the bus looking this long from the outside, surrounded by shabby two-seater benches, and some are already occupied, one traveler per row. The last bench is free. Looks like the upholstery is torn in some places, though, or has it been slid open? You can see springs with sharp wire edges, and some sticky liquid seems to have leaked onto the floor. Why didn't you just sit down in one of the free rows? Here in the back, almost everything is occupied. Most of the passengers seem to have purposefully sat down in the aisle seats, blocking off the window seats. Maybe this is an opportunity to get a little closer to the common Innsmouth visitor. Uh, sit down with someone to the rear bench. Sit down with someone. As a nonconformist, you join one of the passengers in a double seat. Since only one man with, was so considerate as to sit at the window, your options are limited anyway. As far as you can tell, the man is a haggard figure with barely any luggage. The hood of the gray jumper pulled up far into his face. The man looks out into the street as if something very important is happening there that requires his attention. Seat taken, you ask politely. He turns his head and gives you a brief once over. Without saying a word, he turns away again. Sit down anyway. All right, wasn't a no. Sit down and regret it instantly. The smell of sulfur is now overpowered by something else. Something that smells like it's been in the sun for too long. I'm trying to catch a glimpse of what's under that hood. Does this person have a genetic defect? Malnourished? You're not sure exactly where the problem might be, but you're trying to stay professional. You awkwardly stare at the headrest of the person in front of you. Talk to the stranger. There's a chance to get some inside information. Uh, talk about veganism, look the passenger over, play the tourist. Look them over. Oh, okay, he's interesting. Before you start talking to the man next to you, just like that, you take a closer look at him, which wasn't so easy because he's constantly moving in, like a nervous insect. Luckily, he seems to be busy staring at the headrest of the seat in front of him. Uh, take a closer look at his face. 
It's this opportunity to thoroughly study the specimen of an Innsmouth traveler. The furrows around his mouth, the scaly surfaces of his cheek, deep skin folds where the neck begins. Covered by a wet film, you could swear there. He turns to you, his glossy eyes scrutinize you. Hmm? He says, your stomach cramps. Uh, got something on your face. Got something right there. A person sitting next to you lifts his hands, milky white, and wipes his face. Gone, you lie meekly and try to try it with an insecure smile. The man from Innsmouth does the same, you think. During your conversation, you must have missed it. His hand, it's milky white and slightly green at the fingertips. A thin flap of skin seems to stretch between the fingers. Not normal, your subconscious whispers to you. Uh, pity. Poor guy, no doubts, an unfortunate medical curiosity. The poor bastard must have had led a difficult life with these chubby hands. You try not to betray any feelings of panic. After all, it seems as if you might be slowly approaching your destination. The bus leaves the country road and turns off at a wooden sign that says Innsmouth in right red flaky letters. Journey continues rather bumpily along a narrow dirt road littered with numerous potholes. In the distance, some houses are already visible, seagulls circling the roofs of the outermost edge of the city. Slowly, all passengers take their bags out from under the seats and get ready. Curious, you look through the side window. That's odd. The bus passes by a huge... What is this? A scrapyard? Parking lot? Why would something like this be... Uh, here, right outside the city. Past another wooden sign whose half-peeled writing advertises the Innsmouth Park and Ride area. A lot of cars look like they've been sitting here for years. Sand covers some of the bonnets and windscreens. The front door of the bus opens with a squeak, and you join the monotonous line of locals stepping out of the bus as if in a excuse me, as if in a daze, almost walking in step, you all get closer to the exit. As you walk down the steps, you have to protect your eyes from the sunlight. Turns out the windows from the bus were tinted. The other passengers shuffle off. Chapter 3 Finally, Innsmouth, you examine your surroundings while you stretch your legs trying to unwind from the stressful journey. No artist could have adequately captured the serenity and beauty of this place. A clear blue sky lights up the town square, which is paved with bright limestone and surrounded by neo-colonial buildings reminiscent of the 19th century New England. A fresh sea breeze carrying seagulls and locals going about their business. In the center of the square, water trickles from a fountain as you stretch your limbs and breathe in the clean air. You're suddenly startled by the water feature right in front of you. The fountain is an enormous fish-like brass creature. Open jaw lined with shark-like fangs spouts brackish water down its massive and humanly contorted body. And if that wasn't enough, there appear to be human bodies squirming underneath its massive claws. Their faces are as contorted as yours is right now. How long have you been standing here? Eyes wide open in shock, you feel utterly paralyzed. You start to scan the town square and notice more and more disturbing details. On every corner, you spot ornamental statues and reliefs of fish. But these are not your classic harmless kind of fish. These are pagan symbols and grimaces of supernatural creatures from the dark crevices of the deep sea. In surrounding houses, you can see faces pressed against the windows. All the locals appear to be watching you. You suddenly start to think that the cries of the seagulls sound particularly human-like. They sound like human crying, humans crying out in pain. What happened to the idyllic scene from a few moments ago? Welcome to Innsmouth. Turn around. How nice of you to visit. A small elderly woman waves at you from afar. She beams at you as if you were her long-lost grandchild. She seems very different to the, bo uh, to the boars you've met so far on the bus into town. Her squealing shakes you out of your nightmarish panic. It's so good to have you here. I've noticed you're very taken by our local fountain. It was built in 1704 by Abdul Necrotis, favorite artist and friend of Charles Dexter Tillinghast, the founder of Innsmouth. The central figure was a present, and it was supposed to commemorate their travels together in Cairo. You can clearly see the Egyptian influences in Necrotis' work here and here. She points wildly in every direction and here, but I'm sure you've already noticed this yourself. You look like someone who knows his way around art, she says with a wide smile. You're still in shock. Uh, who the hell are you? I have not introduced myself. I'm ever so sorry. In front of you now stands a small, plump person in tasteless costume. Your rudeness doesn't seem to curb her enthusiasm in the, in the slightest. My name is Muriel Pooping Place. I'm the director of Parks Commission, chief tourism officer, and head of the welcoming committee. Ta-da! Behind Muriel, there's a ramshackle wooden information stand lovingly decorated with balloons, a colorful painted sign that reads, Welcome to Innsmouth. Muriel tip tiptoes over to her information stand and picks out a whole load of flyers and leaflets from the rickety display cases. She looks down at all the paper in her arms and briefly shrieks with laughter. My goodness, why don't you take the city map to begin with? Useful, you take the map and put it in your coat pocket. 
Would you like find out more about our wonderful town, which has been awarded the East Coast Stunning Town Award for several years in a row? And would you? Uh, actually, I'm looking for someone. Here I am! Small pl plump woman starts giggling. Insmith welcomes you warmly, so you're looking for someone. It's not that uncommon for two lonely hearts to find one another in this romantic place. Uh, missing girl. I'm looking for this girl. It's always about a girl, isn't it? Uh, Tabitha Marsh, eight years old. Her mother asked me to take on the case. You take out the photo and Muriel immediately rips it out of your hand. Oh, what a cutie, but I'm sorry to say I've not heard anything about missing girls. How awful. This sort of thing doesn't happen in Nismith. Perhaps you can have a look around at the beach or at the playground. There are a lot of kids around there. I'm sure that's where one will be. Within an unnaturally wide grin, she hands you back the photo, turns around quickly, and makes her way over to accost another tourist family. You head further into town along the cobbled road in the direction of the coast. Not long ago, the sun was bright in the sky, but already the first waves of mist are creeping into the streets. The air feels thicker, and the sun can no longer penetrate the fog. Time to think about where you want to go. You slow down, lean your briefcase against a wall, and start p pacing up and down the quiet alleyway. You've got an important choice to make right now. City center is in the north. Even from afar, you can see the outlines of the old and ornately decorated buildings in the main town square. Here, you should find the police station, the main shopping street, and, of course, the town hall. As a coastal town, Innsmouth also has a harbor. From your research, you found out that this is a bustling area with a dreamy beach. You expect there to be mostly tourists. According to your research, the only hotel in town, the Gilliam Mo. Gilman Hotel is located in the old town. You think about checking in. You could do with refreshing up and or with freshening up and getting rid of that bus smell that is still clinging to your clothes. Just you're about to set off, your heart leaps into your throat. You've forgotten your briefcase. This has never happened to you. You usually take good care of the little you possess. There's nothing you can do about this now. You'll have to wait until you re your return journey to find out whether someone has handed it in at the Lost and Found. Still, you could swear that the briefcase was already gone when you got off the bus. Uh, Gilman Hotel. Okay. Shit. Uh, here we are. Main menu. Yes. Okay. So. A lot of reading. A lot of reading. Um, but I can see the humor, uh, permeating through the game. Um, and their approach to, their approach to a, uh, Lovecraftian horror with, with kind of a, a, a sprig of humor, a sprig of good humor. And I like it. I like it a bunch. I like point and click adventures. Um, I don't like this much reading though. Uh, like I have and will continue to play PNCs on my stream. I don't think that I would play this one on my stream, if I'm being completely honest, just because of the sheer amount of reading. And it's it's not that I dislike that amount of reading. I don't like having to do all that reading um, out loud. So this is probably a game that I would play on my own. Uh, the humor gets at bonus points. The fact that they, right from the get-go, address the rather difficult nature of uh the author who's whom is their inspiration um a something i feel like is going to be a thing that's that becomes a standard in like harry potter stuff after jk rowling disappears uh is going to be like we accept the existence of the very questionable beliefs of the author but we're more interested in their work as an author than than their fucked up viewpoint. So, um, I think that that was a good thing to do right from the get go. Uh, and then like just the permeating humor throughout all of this, and the fact that this probably has about five thousand different directions you can go. I feel like you know, obviously meeting the the woman. Um, to take you to Innsmouth is something you'll end up at no matter what, and just kind of crawling down those different branching paths is more for the, the sake of the fun and the funny. Um, but I would be curious to see, like, all of the branching paths on this one. This is probably one, like I said, that I would play on my own. Uh, 
as a fan of PNCs, this one only really loses points in the fact that I have to do all the fucking reading. That's it. Um, the animation is is interesting uh, for the characters that are animated. Uh, I would like to see more of the artwork, though. Um, so, like, it kind of showed in the background of the welcoming committee lady. It kind of showed the fountain that they were talking about, but I would have liked to have seen, like, more detail of that. They're doing a good job of describing things, but I would like to see more of those things visualized. So all in all, um, that's going to be an 8 out of 10 for me on this one. Um, do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down in the comments below. But that is going to do it for this episode of Sippy's First Drink. If you are new to the channel and enjoy the content, please do consider giving me a follow. Check me out on my various other social media. Uh, that's at Sippy Cup Games on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch as well as youtube.com slash sippy cup, depending on where you're consuming this right now. But that is going to do it for me, for the Innsmouth case, for now. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I raise my glass to you. <sighs> Laters.